congratulations. You say what for? For coming out on a rainy day, amen? I'm glad you're here. We have some that are here for the very first time, and we're sure glad you're here. Some that were at our block party yesterday, and I'd like to ask our, our Vacation Bible School director, Crystal, to come up. She's got a couple of things she wants to share, and uh, so she needs some help, so let's care. Thank you guys for coming out yesterday and helping. It was a great success. We brought in, I think we filled two VBS pre-registered kids out yesterday, so that was good. Um, the donate or the decorations, the Oriental trade, if you got from it, it's in already. And um, we can start decorating for VBS on the Friday before VBS starts. But the for your memorabilia, if you can bring it in on that Friday, if you got memorabilia, get with me and let me know and we'll set up something to meet here so that you can drop that off. The memorabilia like what we had What is about. the memorabilia? The jerseys or the any kind of sports memorabilia we have. Pump that would include cardinals. That would include Royal. You're going to get it back. Your name will be put on it. Right. That would include Cubs, Yankees, Anything. any uh, or football teams, uh, soccer teams, any of that stuff. We can decorate the rooms because it's called Game On. Yeah. That's the title. That's the theme for Vacation Pilots. Chiefs. And, you know, and June, June the 1st is when you can start decorating. Yes. Friday, June 1st. And then we'll go ahead and start taking cookie donations. I set a box out by the front door. Um, starting next week, we can go ahead and start taking those, and then that way we can see how many we have before we have this thing go on. <laughs> thank you. Amen. And, and uh, once again, thank you to those that helped with the uh, block party. We had so many new folks here. It was a wonderful thing, and uh, I believe we're going to have a wonderful <laughs> vacation Bible school as well. Uh, let me encourage you to come back to church tonight. Some people don't know that we have church on Sunday night because uh, we have about a little less than half of what we have on Sunday morning. A lot of times on Sunday night, you're welcome to come back then. And I'm just thankful you're here today. Brother Michael, come and lead us in worship.
prayer this morning, I'd like for us to remember the families of school children that lost one of their most precious possessions on Friday with the school shooting in Santa Fe, Texas. Nine children and one teacher were killed in a senseless shooting. A lot of people ask the question, why? I can give you a simple answer. It's a three-letter word, sin. Sin that's in the heart of people. Oh, there are all kinds of things we might try to do. Well, I want to re remind you that the Bible says in the last days that evil shall wax worse and worse. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be vigilant. That we shouldn't do all that we can to try to uh, stem the tide and stop the violence and the shooting. But the reason why is because of sin. And I think the greatest solution is Jesus and also families that come together and worship God together. Family units that are close, care about one another, watch out for each other. So uh, let's remember those families today in Santa Fe. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we are thankful that we can stand in your presence. That we do have a firm foundation of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives. I thank you, Lord, for this crowd that's here on a rainy Sunday morning. And we know that it's been so easy to stay home. But we thank you for those that you've called out to be the called out assembly at Calvary Baptist Church this week. And we pray, God, that all that we do and say would bring honor and glory to you. Lord, this morning we, we want to lift up the families that lost their loved ones in that tragic school shooting. God, we pray you comfort them as only you can. We also pray for the young man that shot all of these others, Lord. And God, that you would convict him of that sin. Lord, I pray that somehow, he, if he doesn't know Jesus, he would come to know Jesus. And somehow you would place your, and we know that you can, place your loving arms around each and every one of those that are hurting. Lord, help us to tell others the good news of Christ. and Help us to help families to become stronger in their faith. Lord, forgive us for complacency sometimes. For not being the vigilant church of Jesus Christ that we ought to be. Going out with a gospel message. And Father, I pray for uh, those that came to the block party yesterday, so many that came on this campus for the very first time. And I pray that children would be in vacation Bible school because of that, that families would be begin worshiping here at Calvary. And thank you for those that are here today for the first time. And now, God, I pray that everything that we do, all that's said and done, Calvary Baptist Church, will be said and done because give you praise and honor and glory. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. To remain seated 644, count your blessings. <laughs>
pray this morning. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for today, Father. Thank you for all the blessings that you've given each and every one of us, Father, and the blessings that you've given this church, Father. Lord, as we uh, uh, come to you and, and pray, we just sang this song, Father. Uh, your voice is a, it is a sweet, sweet voice. If we just listen, Lord. Father, we just pray now that you'll be with us this morning. Pray that you will be with this offering and, and use it to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
you can like that good old fashioned music. Anybody here love that? Let me tell you. Amen. That's great. We have a couple of uh, concerts coming up. Uh, Michael, have you gotten the details on that one yet? I did, but Sharon shot it down. Oh, no. Well, Michael's crew is going to be singing soon, and that's going to be good. And then in August, we have a concert that's coming uh, with a group from Branson. They're going to come on the first Sunday night of August, and uh, that's going to be good. Uh, so you get some more of that kind of music. And then we have the generation, uh, second generation, coming back in September. Amen? And I know you all enjoy second generation. You want to be in church next Sunday? I'm going to tell you that in advance. Because we're going to have baptism. That's going to be special. Right now there are four that are ready to be baptized, and there might be some more that are here. So uh, if you want to get in on that, you need to make a public declaration of your faith today, and we'll talk to you about that. And also, we're going to have baby Reagan with us. That's our one-year-old granddaughter. She's going to be with us for four days. Pray especially for me. <laughs> because I have care of her from about 3 o'clock on Thursday afternoon until my wife gets home from work that night. And she said that's going to be about 8 o'clock. <laughs> How many diapers will I need to change during that period of time? I'm not sure. <laughs> this is five. That's way too many. Jessica, you may need to come to my house to help me out there. Look at Romans chapter 13. How do you know when their diaper needs to get changed anyway?
at paying this debt. And help us, Lord, with your wisdom, power, and strength to pay all debts in a timely manner. But this debt, most importantly, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first part of this passage, verse 8, in some translations say, Oh, no man anything. It's kind of hard to live life and not owe anybody. How many of you like to pay your bills? How many, I won't ask you to raise your hand on this one, but how many of you struggle to pay your bills? Don't raise your hand. We all do sometimes, don't we? I want to give you a few tips this morning. But this is not a money management sermon, okay? So don't, don't turn me off all of a sudden. Do you know that over 50% of people in America that have credit cards, over 50% of people in America that have credit cards pay the minimum only every month? Do you know what happens if you pay the minimum only? You're going to be paying for the rest of your life. Now, I look at credit cards as a convenience. They're convenience to me because I don't have to have the cash in my pocket and I can get gas. And at the end of the month, my wife and I, we, we pay our credit card off every month. Now, sometimes, if we had a busy month of spending, it's a little more difficult to pay it off. But if you're going to use credit cards, that's, that's the best way to use a credit card is pay it off at the end of the month. If you're not able to, then you're buying things that are outside of your ability to pay. And that's not a smart thing. Oh, no man. Any that. Something I discovered this week in a webinar that I was on about reaching the next generation. And the next generations are, by the way, the millennial generation. The millennial generation. I wonder how many we have that are here from the millennial generation. And this is how you'll know if you were born in the year 2000. No, wait a second. 19... Uh, 1980 to 2000. If you were born in those years, raise your hand. 1980 to 2000. There are not many millennials here. There's a few. But you're the millennial. And then the next generation is called Generation Z. Z as in zebra. And Generation Z were born from the year 2000 to the year 2020. Now, none of you were born in 2019 or 2020. Let me tell you that right now. But those who were born from 2000 to 2020, how many are here that were born in 2000 to 2020? We see hands coming up way back there. Gary, put your hand down with a rod off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes Gary has a problem with math. That, that was 1920. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that, those are the generations that are coming up. But the thing that I discovered about the millennial generation is they are the generation that is in the greatest debt right now. The millennial generation. And the biggest reason that they're in the greatest debt, there are two things. Those in the millennial generation want to have everything it took their parents to 20 years, 30 years to get. They want it all immediately in their first apartment or their first house. And the second thing is student loans. Student loans. They say, all you got to do is just sign here, you can get the money to go to college, or, you know, whatever. And, and they owe an enormous amount to student loans. That's why many of the millennials wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, it's past tense now, you know. Because Bernie Sanders said, I'll pay off your student loans for you. But the problem is, how's he going to do that? So, so life is better when we are not in debt to someone else. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7 says, uh, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. So if you feel like your bills and uh, your, your, your finances are, are a mess and you're, you're in trouble, and I'm not trying to discourage anybody, I'm just trying to say something practical here, try to get it to the point where you can manage it. If you're having a problem with the debt that you owe, and it says, oh, no man, anything, try to go on a cash-only basis. 
Not an easy thing to do. But if you do that, go on a cash only basis and quit borrowing, and that would include credit cards if you have a problem with it, you're going to find the freedom that comes. A few people raise their hand saying they like to pay their bills. The people that can pay their bills right away are the people that have the money to be able to pay it. It's not necessarily that they're rich. It could just be that they're wise in how they spend their money. But that's not the main point of this passage. The main point of this passage is something that we all owe that we ought to pay. And it's found in the second part of verse 8. Or, um, excuse me, verse, yes, Romans 13, verse 8. It look, helps to look at the right passage. Romans 13, verse 8, when it says, Owe no man anything, or let no re debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The debt that we often pay. This is the debt that everybody in this room can pay. Is the debt that we owe to love one another. To love one another. Loving one another. By the way, <coughs> loving one another is the basic principle of the Christian life. Do you want to live like a Christian? The Bible says, Jesus said it, Paul said it here, love one another. In John chapter 13, in verse 34, Jesus said it like this, A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And then I think he, Paul puts a very interesting twist on this. He says, when you love one another, you're going to fulfill a number of the commandments. Actually, you'll fulfill six of the Ten Commandments by loving one another. I'm going to show you that in just a second here. Six of the Ten Commandments. Look at verses 9 and 10. The commandments do not commit adultery. Do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. That, that means don't want what somebody else has. And whatever other commandment there may be, he says, there's summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. Because love does no harm to his neighbor. You see, when you love somebody, you don't want to hurt them. So when you love someone, you're not going to steal from them. Our, our former police chief, who's absent this morning, uh, not too many months ago, I asked Brother John, I said, what is the greatest crime in Sedalia? What is the biggest thing that your police force has to battle? And you'd be surprised at what he said. Because I thought he was going to say, it's drugs. Illegal drugs. And by the way, they're all over the place. So Daniel has a big drug problem. But that wasn't the biggest crime. He said the biggest crime is stealing. Thou shalt not steal. Stealing. Now why are they stealing? What do you think, guys? Why are they stealing? They can't afford it. They can't afford it? <laughs> well, that, there you go. Get James got it. How do you know that? Uh, we go there. We're not going to go there, Jay. No, no, no. That, that, the thing is, they're, bought, they're stealing, and they'll steal anything to get the drugs. But when you love somebody, Tommy, you're not going to steal from them, right? If you really love them, you're not going to steal from them. If you love somebody, if you love somebody, you're not going to commit adultery. I mean, Bible says this very clearly. Sex is only right in a marriage relationship. And I want to add a little bit to that. In a marriage relationship between one man and one woman. That's what the Bible teaches. But committing adultery is stepping out of that marriage relationship. So if you really love somebody, 
you're not going to commit adultery. If you really love somebody, you're not going to lie to them. If you really love them, you're going to tell them the truth. You're not going to lie. Think about it for a moment. When was the last time, and don't, don't raise your hand, don't tell me, Jay. When was the last time you, when was the last time you told a lie? And what happened? Now, now, I said, don't tell me, no, don't tell me. And what happened when you told a lie? What, what normally, you can't say this, what normally happens when you tell one lie? You've got to tell another lie. You've got to tell another lie. Bill, why do you know that? <laughs> You've got to tell another lie to cover up for the first lie. And what is it that little Scottish saying says, oh, what a tangled web we weave when at first we do deceive. My wife and I went on a mission trip to Scotland in 2008, and they gave us mugs with Scottish saying on them. And the mug they gave me was that one. I don't know what the story was there, but, but anyway, but when we love someone, we're not going to steal from them, we're not going to commit adultery, uh, because one of the reasons we won't commit adultery is because we love the person we're married to. We're not going to lie. Uh, what are the other commandments that, that, that he's talking about here that we fulfill when we love one another? Um, we're not going to covet. That means we're not going to strongly desire what somebody else has when we really love them. This is the question. And by the way, there's six, there are ten commandments, you know that. And, and Jay knows this, I keep picking on Jay today, if you go up to the average person on the street, they don't know what the Ten Commandments are. So for that reason, starting the 3rd of June, the first Sunday of June, I'm going to preach a sermon every Sunday morning on one of the Ten Commandments. It's my top ten series for the summer. Don't miss a one of those sermons, because it's going to help to ingrain those commandments in your heart. Now, I want you to understand something about the commandments, though. And I'll teach this as I preach on the commandments. You can keep every one of the Ten Commandments and still go to hell. But the problem is, you can't keep every one of the Ten Commandments. By the way, if, if, you, if you love somebody, you're not going to lie to them. So let me ask you a question this morning. How many of you have never told a lie in your entire life? But that is down in the rod off. <laughs> All right. Oh, come on, Bill. <laughs> yeah. How many have ever stolen anything in your entire life? There might be. There might be somebody that stole anything. But think about it. A, a nickel or a dime, a piece of bubble gum, an answer off of somebody else's test. You know, you weren't meaning you were just checking to make sure they were right. <laughs> so well, we know this this morning. The crowd that's here are all liars and thieves. Everybody in there. The Bible says we are all sinners. The Bible also says in James chapter 2 and verse 10, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. Guilty of all. Break one of the Ten Commandments and you've broken them all. So does that mean go ahead and break them? No. God gave the Ten Commandments for this reason. As a mirror to show us that we're sinners. Not, not that we shouldn't keep the Ten Commandments. We certainly should. But the way to keep the Ten Commandments is to love one another. When you love someone, you don't want to hurt them. Look at John 13, 34, and 35 again. We're not going to look back at Romans again. Once again, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And then you've heard this before, haven't you? By this, shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love 
one for another. So what do we owe each other? We owe each other a debt of love. How are you doing at paying that debt? How are you doing at displaying your love to one another? I think the, the greatest problem that we have in the church is so many people, so many times, want to be in charge. Now, sometimes you need to be in charge. I need Michael to be in charge of the music. If Michael's not in charge of the music, he has an accountability partner sitting right next to him, and that's Judy. And probably every week, Judy's bugging Michael about something. Right, Judy? Is that right, Michael? Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> about our music ministry in this church is they love each other as brother and sister in Christ. And so while they may go back and forth sometimes, they have love one for another. It's when people are in churches sometimes and in any organization, but I'm going to put it in the context of the church. It's if and when we become territorial saying, oh, that's my, that's my place and that's my agenda and that's my department. And that's my ministry. And I can tell you this, Crystal is going to be happy to have any help she can get for vacation Bible school. Now, Crystal, I imagine you were wondering if we could pull off that block party yesterday, especially when you saw the storm clouds and we didn't know whether to set up inside or outside. You know what the solution we found was? Set up inside and outside. So we set up inside and outside. And, 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 and God blessed and we had... Workers, in fact, I was telling Marie, and she was down there with, with baby Reagan yesterday, and I was telling Marie, we had different workers than I've ever seen. Isn't that right, Juanita? We had so many different people. It wasn't the same old crowd doing all the work. That is a wonderful thing. Because the same old crowd shouldn't have to do everything. They say in most churches and organizations, but since this is a church, we'll leave it here, that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. That same 20% of the people get tired if they have to keep doing all the work. The better thing is for that 20% to grow and have 30%, 40%, and 50% of the people actually doing the work. Every problem we face in the church and in the world will be solved if we would just love one another. I want us to look at a verse that's not on our slide program, but it's in our Bible, so if you can turn to your Bible, if you have your Bible, turn to 1 John chapter 4. And by the way, you certainly can turn in your Bible as well as look on the screen for the Bible verses that we're looking at. But I was reminded of these verses when I watched a replay of part of the royal wedding. How many of you got up at 5 a.m. to watch the royal wedding? Is there a soul, a few of you? I would imagine you have a British heritage, some of you that got up at that time. How many of you watched part of the, the, the royal wedding? You certainly have the heritage, young lady. That's right. From all the way down to New Zealand. So last night, my wife and I finally got in our happy place when we were sitting in the chair and just relaxing after she got home from Nixa. And I had the remote control. You know what that means, don't you? Well, actually, at first, it meant I was watching the royals and it and the Yankees, but that ended when she came in the room, okay? So I, I said, well, let's see what's on TV. And I, I saw CNN was having a replay of the Royal West. So I clicked on there. And I clicked on there just in the nick of time to watch the bishop from America preach his sermon about love. And if you've ever gone on the internet and looked for something, you need to look for that sermon by this African-American bishop from America, <coughs> Episcopal bishop, preaching on the subject of love. I'll tell you what, if, if you hadn't seen him in his fancy robe and all of his regalia, you'd have thought he was a Baptist preacher, amen? <laughs> he was preaching it. First John 4, 7, and 8, he was preaching on love. And folks, this is what we've got to have. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And this
this next verse is pretty important. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. If your life is characterized by something besides love, you better check out deep within your heart whether your relationship with God is right. You, you all have met people that are like this, that they seem to always be mean, hateful, angry, mad about something. There's something going on in their heart that's just not right. Look at verse 8. Call me verse 9. This, this is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. God loved us so much that He cared to give the very best, and that was His Son, Jesus. Verse 10. This is the capsule right here. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be, as it says in the King James, the propitiation for our sins. Now that's not an easy word, propitiation. It's not a word we use very often, but do you know what that word propitiation means? It means the complete and satisfactory payment for our sins. Now let me explain that to you. Why we need a propitiation for our sins is because we're all sinners. And as sinners, we deserve to go to a place called hell, separated from God forever. And God said the payment for sin must be made. And God's the one who said what the payment for sin is. He said the payment for sin, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. And without having our payment for sin paid by someone else, we would have to pay for our own sin by being separated from God forever in a place called hell. But God loved us so much that he sent his only son who was perfect in the flesh, perfect. And as the only perfect man who's ever lived, he died to pay for our imperfection. He died to pay for all of our sins. He loved us and sent his son to be the complete and satisfactory payment for our sins. And he says that all that we can do to get to heaven is to recognize the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died in our place, was buried and rose again, without the sin, that He will give us eternal life when we place our faith and trust in Christ. That's the love of God. Listen to that old song the other day. The love of God so rich and pure, so measureless and free. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. The love of God. God loved us so much that He gave His Son so that we could go to heaven. You can't even begin to love others until you receive the love of God. Oh, I hope you have. And if you have, place your faith in Christ. Ask Jesus to be your Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will know the love of God. And then once we have believed that, the Bible says we need to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We ask you to come to the altar to say that you have received Christ in your heart. Not to become a Christian, but because you're asking Jesus to be your Savior. And then we ask you to follow him in believer's baptism. Why do we do that? It's not because we're a Baptist church. It's because we're a Bible-believing and teaching church. And the Bible commands me and every one of us to go out into the world, tell people the good news of God's love, and then baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when we fill the tank, when Richard fills the tank next week, the purpose of that is so that we can help people follow Jesus the way God said to do so. So if you've never received the love of God, would you receive His love? Would you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? And then he says one more thing in verse 11. Dear friends, since God so loved us, shouldn't we love each other? Answer that question for me. Since God so loved us, shouldn't we love each other? Every problem we face, 
with those around us. Every problem we face in this world, every school shooting could be solved if everybody would just love one another. Easy said, not so easy to do. Would you pray? Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Have you received the love of God? For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only son, that's Jesus, to die on the cross, be buried and rise again, so that whosoever believeth in him, believes in Jesus, won't perish, they won't go to hell, but they'll have everlasting life. Have you placed your faith in Jesus? Have you trusted in Christ alone as your only hope for heaven? And if you have, have you publicly declared that to others? Maybe you did it last week. Maybe you did it a few months ago. Maybe you did it yesterday. Maybe you're doing it right now. Place your faith in Christ. And then because you placed your faith in Christ, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. I wonder if there's someone this morning that would say, Pastor, pray for me because this morning I'm asking Jesus to be my Savior. How do you do it? God, I know I'm a sinner. I don't deserve to go to heaven. But I believe Jesus died in my place. Please forgive me of my sins. I'm trusting Jesus and Jesus alone to save me. If you've never done that, would you do that today? And if you're doing that and I can pray for you, would you let me know by lifting up your hand and putting it back down and say, Pastor, now pray for me. I'm asking Jesus to be my Savior today. Is there one? All across the congregation, have you asked Jesus to be your Savior and Lord? And then, Christian friend, are you willing to follow him? And so I'm to follow him as a new believer in this church, to follow him in baptism, or as, as a, a baptized believer that's a member of another church, and you want to come and become a part of this fellowship today, we invite you to come, to move toward becoming a part of this fellowship by letter, by statement of faith during this invitation. Father, speak to hearts and lives. Thank you for some that may be making that decision of faith today. Uh, give courage to some that need to make the decision to come down the aisle and follow Jesus in baptism. And then, Father, I pray. I pray for those that uh, are here that haven't been expressing the love of God in their life, even though they know and have experienced the love of God. Lord, help us, as you loved us, to love one another. And if there's any that need to repent, of sin and get their hearts right with you so that they can love one another. Help them to do that now. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. You come if God spoke in your heart today. You have a decision of faith you need to make today. Don't put it off. Come right now.
Uh, God bless you. Don't forget the cookies for Vacation Bible School. Store-bought will be fine. Homemade will be better. But whatever you want to make, bring it. The kids will have them. It will be keep uh, dead out of the cookies. And, uh, but let's sing our closing song. One thing we'll remind you all. Uh, choir, 5 o'clock today. We're supposed to get storm again. Guess anyone want to guess what time it's supposed to start? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. <laughs> so let's start at five till five. So we're inside when it starts and we're done. Honestly, we're we're doing something that will be very familiar. So if you have been putting off joining choir, we're going to be doing the July 4th celebration. But it's going to take a small 20, 25 minute inch, probably just the music portion of that Sunday. It is not too late. Next week, you might be getting a little bit later, depending on your personal skill, though. But if you'd like to join and come and sing in this, and that would be a good way to try out choir, by all means come, be here. I think we probably ought to start at about 5 to 5, honestly, because I think the little Alexa app said 5 o'clock. So she's never wrong. Hey, Michael, you know. you've got to be here for them to start. <laughs> I thought you were done for the day. Are you not done? Anybody didn't watch the horse race? Who watched the horse race?